If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Hi guys, I'm James, a senior environment artist currently working in the games industry. This is a brief overview of my latest scene with a focus on a few of the elements I think will be of most interest. Alright then, let's get started. To give you a quick overview of my general process, I always start with a simple brief or idea. For example, I wanted this project to be an archetypal, stylized scene, rolling hills of grass, blue skies, etc. This then informs a phase of reference gathering and concept ideation. Once I have a clear vision in my mind, I will block out the scene and create A1 versions of the modular kits. From there, once I am satisfied with the kit's functionality, I will then take it forward and make final assets. When creating the modular kit, flexibility, efficiency, and functionality are the priority. To this end, I created a simple kit of wall pieces, corner pieces, roofs, and what I call bolt-ons. A variety of intersecting assets such as chimneys, windows, etc. which can be quickly assembled into a vast number of varied formations to create a unique but cohesive structure. My general thought process when creating this kit was to focus on the silhouette. As it's stylized and low fidelity in nature, most of the characters conveyed in the form. Tapering the foundations, bowing support beams, and having overhanging upper floors all add to the kit's charm. To further enhance this kit's efficiency and adaptability, I implemented a few tricks to give you cheap wins. These included utilizing the World Align Texture node for my tileable base materials, ensuring consistent scaling across my scene without the need for additional variant meshes. Vertex color painting for material variation, as can be seen here in my plaster, and utilizing a color swatch to give me subtle hue variation in my wood material, which I'll go into a bit more detail about now. I have a tiling wood grain albedo, roughness and normal texture. Then I use a vector 3 parameter, which I mask to give my x and y coordinates for my UV tiling. I then look between this and my color swatch, a low resolution texture of varying hues that a second UV layer references to give additional variation to adjacent planks. I use several lerps and multiplies to expose parameters throughout the material graph that give me easy control over normal tensity, albedo brightness, etc. all from the material instance. I also use vertex painting to allow moss to be added to the wood. The base vertex colour is multiplied by a noise texture that is fed through a world aligned texture node to give me some nice organic variation to the mask edge. For the water material, I spent a fair amount of time experimenting and evolving its feature set. So let's take a look at the material now. Its primary elements are relatively simple. I lurk between the shallow and deep water colours with the depth fade node. I have two instances of my normal map hooked up with differing panel speeds to give me my surface ripples, and I reference Dean Ashford's great stylized water material tutorial for the sparkles, which I have linked below in the details. Here is where it gets a little more complicated. I used mesh distance fields to create the edge foam where assets intersect. Initially, I have a solid line defined by a distance to nearest surface node, which is then divided by a scalar parameter controlling the width. This is then improved upon with panning ripples, which make use of the distance to nearest surface and vector to radial value nodes to allow the ripples to conform to the edge and animate outward. The output of this is then plugged into the alpha of a lerp controlling where the edge foam appears. The ripple texture itself was a very simple mask that I painted in Photoshop, as can be seen here. Along with the water, the grass was an integral component of the scene as it took up a large amount of the real estate. Its material relatively simple when broken down. I lurk between two colours with the use of a gradient mask. I then have a world space pattern defined by a simple texture mask which I can swap out and scale. As always, I have various scalar parameters exposed throughout the graph to give me more control in the material instance. I created a quick brushstroke style texture mask in Photoshop which used a panel node and plugs into the simple grass wind to give me my wind ripple effect. And finally, I used a dither temporal AA node and a pixel depth node to fade the detail foliage grass once it is beyond a certain distance. A large factor in making an environment feel alive comes from movement. There are several easy tricks that can be used such as rotators, padding textures, cloth physics, particle effects, and world position offsetting materials to simulate wind sway and foliage, ropes, etc. 
But in addition to the usual, I also put together a simple blueprint to simulate buoyancy, which I used on the lanterns floating on the lake. Essentially, in the blueprint, I have a float defining the speed of the roll and pitch, which are then multiplied by the game time and fed into a sign node. I then define a max angle and add a rotating movement component to complete the bobbing effect. That's all there is to it. And that's it for this short breakdown video. I hope what I have covered here today you have found useful. If you would like to see more of my work, you can do so on my ArtStation page linked below. Thank you to Stylized Station, and thank you for watching.